Earlier this year, the conflict between Palestine and Israel flared up again with devastating results. The October 7th massacre and ensuing war are just a small part of what has been an ongoing conflict since Israel's inception as a country in 1948. This conflict has brought many hardships for both countries, both culturally and economically. There must be a solution to allow them to coexist, but for that to happen, a few significant steps need to take place. I do not have skin in this conflict, nor do I consider myself a subject matter expert, but it is important that this topic is discussed and that a resolution can be found. So a little background on Israel and Palestine, as far as where they're located. Palestine is located near Egypt, along the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, Israel was created within Palestine in 1948 as a haven for Zionists by several British politicians in the early 1900s. I won't get into that story. It's, it's a pretty um, crazy story. Israel has slowly pushed Palestinians out of their territory through the implementation of settlement incentives and forced relocation policies. As a result, both nations have been at war with each other for about 75 years. So on October 7th of this year, Hamas committed a massacre uh, on the Israeli-Palestinian border with the Gaza Strip. They had been drilling for this uh, attack for months prior to it. And Israel knew about it, the intelligence agency did, they did nothing about it, um, and Israel then declared war on Hamas. It almost seemed like the ultra-right-wing cabinet of Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Prime Minister of Israel, was looking for a reason to go to war with Hamas, and they just let the October 7th attack happen. And I'm just speculating, but that's what it kind of seems like. So what were the goals of Israel this year when they declared war? Well, the main goal was to eradicate the Hamas militant group by whatever means necessary. They had warned civilians within the buffer zone seen here in the red on the map to move or be bombed, essentially. Unfortunately, Hamas has also told, convinced the civilians in those areas that they are safer if they stay put. Israel's plan was to start at the northern part of the Gaza Strip and then also at the center and work their way down south until they had either completely destroyed the Gaza Strip or Hamas surrendered. Uh, a little hint, Hamas doesn't ever plan on surrendering. It's not in their nature. Israeli commanders and politicians see the Palestinian civilian casualties as an unfortunate but necessary uh, evil, essentially, to meet their goal. Uh, they have stated this multiple times on various interviews. Um, in their eyes, the ends justify the means. So a, there are some obvious effects of constant war. You have economic, you have cultural. Uh, from an economic standpoint, the Palestinians rely heavily on foreign aid to survive in the Gaza Strip on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and this year, because of the conflict, Israel ended up blocking any traffic uh, in and out of that Gaza Strip. And because of it, they are not, um, not able to provide medical aid, not able to provide food, running water, uh, plumbing, you know, sanitation, all of these basic needs that we have and expect as, you know, as a, as a civilized world or as a civilized country. Um, they're not able to provide those right now. Uh, culturally, there's always that constant fear of being bombed, attacked, assassinated. According to Brock Tillman et al., during 2014, Several organized armed groups from Gaza Strip attacked Israel, and they not only fired over 4,000 rockets and over 1,700 mortar shells into Israel, but they also participated in violent confrontations with the Israeli Defense Forces. Um, during that time, two Israeli teens were murdered, and and after that, one Palestinian teen was murdered as a revenge killing in the, in, in the same year. It's, it's, there's always that looming, you know, overhead thought in your mind, like, am I next? From a normal, and then there's normalization of the conflict. You know, we hear about it regularly in the, in the media in the U.S. And usually there's, it's portrayed as if there's nothing we can do about it. It's just a, something that happens uh, every few years. 
and Israel always seems to be portrayed as the victim in 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 those news stories, and that it just doesn't seem to be the case when you actually do the research. You know, Hamas certainly instigates some of those conflicts, uh, but on the flip side, you know, Israel goes in and and there is much more devastation and much more. Um, you know, death and destruction as a result of what they are uh, reacting with. So how can Palestine and Israel coexist? For starters, they could provide equal aid to victims on both sides of the conflict and work together. A study performed by Brock Tillman et al. supports this as a huge unforeseen step in the right direction. Recognition of both religious claims to the sites within Palestine um, is also important. And understanding that it's a common issue when discussing religious differences between the two countries will, will help them tremendously. They also need to look at ousting the far right ultranationalists in Israel's government and Hamas. Uh, this will require a moderator country to reconcile and it's going to probably be the largest hurdle they face. After that, they'll be able to rewrite a constitution that recognizes Palestinians and Israel's as equals. Currently, they don't. Israel's do not recognize Palestinians as equals. <coughs> there are many hurdles to be jumped for Israel and Palestine to peacefully exist together. But an end to the fighting could bring prosperity and peace with neighbors of Israel, and it could also provide an economic boom that would um, spread out into countries like Jordan and Egypt. The people would not have to remain fearful of attacks and food and basic services would be readily available. The war needs to end and both cultures need equal representation within the government. It is a long road ahead of them, but with diplomacy and the right public figures buying in, it is possible.